Yes, 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 yes. Welcome six o'clock in the UK. Wherever you are, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Token Tracks Drop Party for the one and only Miss Sarah May. Coming in. Hello. Hello Hi, everyone. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. That tune. That's a sick tune. When did you put that yeah, out? I can't you just pulled that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to a bunch of tunes of yours this afternoon. I was like, what? That tune is sick. I've got to get hold of that. I need that. I need to play that. When did you put that out? Oh, God, that was that was years ago. Um, oh, it's, it's a corker. Yeah, like maybe 10 years ago. Um, and it's really funny. The, the, the guy that actually organized that or organized me to, or connected me with the original singer because that's a singer from – Naples called mm. Lu- Lu- Lucia Cassini, and that was like a massive hit in Italy, disco hit in the seventies. So Andrea down there in the audience, he actually he organised me to make a remix of of that song. So we've got to bring Andrea up later. So he's a very into integral part of my whole journey. So isn't that, see? Isn't that just that? That's that's just sort. It's not coincidence. It's fate. It's it's karma. It's you know what I mean. It's like I was like that's a tune, and I picked that one out, not knowing at all that Andrea was part of it, and of course an integral part of the, the new drop as well. So fantastic! See, it's all coming together. It's a beautiful thing. Um, everybody, thanks very much for joining. Please retweet the room. Let's get some more people in here. We're going to have a chat with Sarah. We're going to play some more music, and of course, we'll count down to six thirty for when we do the drop of the brand new tune. Keep trying, which is only available right now on Token Tracks. I'm going to post up uh, at the top there if I get my shit together to do this. Um, where it is, you can go and check it out. Of course, you can, you know, you can't listen to it yet until we've dropped it, um, which you were doing at 6 day. So you better get yourself together. Sarah, how are you today, my love? You really good? I, I am good. Um, I, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I have to say, um, you know, being my first uh, sort of music drop, I feel like, you know, it's um, like all my creative pursuits is it, 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 they're like converging in this point right now, you know, because it's like bringing it all together, the the music, the art, the painting and the animation. And uh, yeah, so so it's a pretty big uh, occasion for me. So I'm, I'm nervous and excited. Don't, oh, oh, that button is, oh, I hate that button. Um, listen, the thing is, as I always say to everybody in this space, is that everything is a process. It's a process going, you know, that you're moving forward. And just whatever happens, it happens. It doesn't make any difference what happens. What you're doing is you're getting involved and you're experimenting and you're trying and you're doing different things. And as as everybody that is doing that, and props to Fifi, see Fifi in the audience there. You know, everybody that tries in this space tries doing things. Is that we're all just trying? You know, we're all just doing things that are kind of seem right to us. And see, the thing about this tune you know, is, it's absolutely slamming. I mean, it is a it's a fucking great tune. So, you know, unlike some nfts music nfts out there um which i always think just sound like they've just sort of been like plunged together and not really thought through this is this is an incredible track why don't you tell us a little bit well i tell you what first of all sarah why don't we tell you for those that don't know maybe a little bit of backstory about yourself about how you find yourself to be here you know today with token tracks but also your experience incredible you know um uh, career that you've had and djing and making music and stuff so when did it all start for you well, <laughs> quite a few years ago, actually. Um, and, like, if we want to start at the real beginning, that would have been, like, when I was 16 years old. So um, that's when I actually started my art career because that came first. Um, so we had a bit of a family tragedy um, when I was 16 and um, the result of that was that I ended up in the art room in at my school and I didn't know how to express my emotions in that time um, and it wasn't something that my family was very good at. You know, we didn't talk about these things. So 
I, I remember getting paint and like sort of like throwing it on the canvas and, and doing that to, to sort of deal with all these unexpressed emotions. And this woman's figure just evolved. Um, and so from that sort of point on, I actually just stayed in the art room and I painted and I painted and I painted. And then all of a sudden, like my teachers, like, like I didn't have to go to class anymore. Like I didn't have to go to chemistry. I didn't have to go to maths. Um, I didn't even have to have to go to art history. They just sort of, I think they, I don't know if they felt sorry for me or maybe they, they thought this was the right thing for me, but they just let me, they let me go basically. So that led to me um, applying to Sydney University to do fine arts. So I ended up doing fine arts in Sydney University, but that lasted like a sweet minute because um, that was in the city and <laughs> that was like in the 90s when, when house music had just sort of hit the Australian shores and it was just like these sounds I'd never heard before and like these experiences and this energy. And I, I, I mean, I, I got enamored with that sort of the, the, the music and the scene and um, got it, got a situation where it taught, taught myself to DJ and, and decided that I'm like, I can't do both because one means that I have to get up at like eight in the morning and the other one means that I'm getting home at eight in the morning. So um, I had to decide and obviously DJing went out because that, sort of seemed more fun at the time um so I told myself sat in a room for like three months and and borrowed a friend's records and taught myself to DJ and then approached my favorite club in Sydney um I got a job there and then I just I started DJing from a very young age so I was 19 at the time and then I I sort of like did the Australian circuit for sort of like the next six years until someone told me about this like amazing island in the Mediterranean where all my favorite international DJs were playing every single night of the week and at that time we'd get maybe one international DJ come through like every couple of months you know and it'd be a big occasion so for me like to be able to be sort of up close and personal with these with my the people that were inspiring me in that time was just like a, a concept I couldn't comprehend so I just booked my flight and ended up in Ibiza um, I, I literally bypassed the UK. I bypassed everywhere else. I went straight from Australia to Ibiza, but not even Ibiza, to a place called Pikes. So Pikes is a sort of like an infamous um, party hotel where all the like uh, stars used to stay. Um, George Michael. It's, Club, it's Club Tropicana, isn't it? Yeah, Club yeah, Tropicana. Exactly. <laughs> so like, Tony, so Tony was an crazy. absolute, he was an absolute legend. I loved hanging out with Tony and hearing the stories. He was just full of incredible stories. Yeah, his stories. And he's, he was Australian too, wasn't he? So, you know, it was sort of. So he loved you. Yeah. <laughs> <I bet. laughs> yeah. yeah we, we, I, I, I've been on, on the side of uh, many of Tony's stories as well. It's always been very entertaining, was very entertaining. Um, so yeah, so I, I like from that first moment, I sort of fell in love with the island, and then I ended up walking into a club called Pasha, and I literally got to the top of the stairs and I looked around. And I went, "This is my club. I have to play here." Everyone just looked at me and thought I was nuts because, like, I was like what they call a giddy, which is like an you know like a foreigner. Um, I was this young. 24 year old girl like you know it was very male dominated back then um and they're just like this is not gonna happen I'm like yeah it's it's so gonna happen because I'm I, I just feel it so I did a long story short I managed to I spent two years um two summers in Ibiza just like hanging out there because I believe like when you want something you you got to put yourself right in the middle of it and then um by like I missed a flight and 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 they felt sorry for me so they offered me a, a, like a gig to to like give me some money so I could pay for my connecting flight because I'd run out of money as well um and then I it just ended up being a really really good gig and they I got offered the residency and that's just that started off the next phase of my life which was working for Pasha and um working in the club which was my favorite place to DJ in the world but also traveling around the world um, with the brand and and playing for their parties. And then that led me to just DJing and traveling on my own, um, under my own name, um, and then producing a few songs along the way, like you've just shown, Tommy. Um, 
and then yeah and then I, I I had my son that sort of was the next phase um and then I sort of I don't wouldn't say I got disinterested but it was sort of the right time to be disinterested because um the the style of music was getting a little bit too commercial it, it sort of lost that sort of edge that I had in the 90s and um EDM was becoming very popular so I was getting I was having to play that sort of style and and the 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 touring circuit can be quite grueling I have to say um too much partying sometimes and it's sort of it sort of was expected in those days so um it was sort of nice to be a, to be able to be a mum and take a new like direction um and then that sort of led me to questioning my whole sort of like I don't know just everything about the music industry it was it just wasn't becoming just didn't feel as fresh and exciting and as like honest as maybe it did in the 90s so um, I decided to return to my art and that was just before the pandemic and I knew that I was onto something because um, I literally just I did what I did when I was 16 I, 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 I found a style and I just started painting and I didn't really stop for like two months and then I had an exhibition <laughs> and then and then I like, and then the pandemic was there and I'm like, okay, so it pushed me in all these different directions. I, I got all these different jobs in that time, um, which all lead into this as well. Like, you know, so learning social media and content writing and stuff like that. Um, and then I got into crypto and taught myself to leverage trade because I, you know, I've got a, a bit of a degenerate at heart. Um, so, uh that led me to becoming part of the the lunar community, the Terra community. So we were like called the lunatics. So, which was great. It was a great community and yeah, really great energy. And I met a lot of great people along the way. And the people that I met from there um, asked me if I wanted to be involved in a decentralized music festival, which I thought was a brilliant idea because I've always been interested in like, fairness and equality and people collaborating and getting their fair share of the pie and I think that's sort of one of the things that sort of didn't feel right about the music industry or the electronic music scene um when I decided to sort of I didn't quit but I didn't make it my main focus um I put art as my main focus so the fact that we could build something where everyone would like get their fair share and everyone that contributes gets something back I thought was such a brilliant idea um so I, I jumped on board um, with Decentralize. Um, we, we started out, we were, we, we were in the beginning called Lunafest, but um, obviously changed the names so once the sort of uh, the, the Terra uh, blockchain had a few issues. So we became Decentralize and um, yeah, so I've been working with Decentralize now, It'd be like almost coming up to a year and a half and that led me down like understanding Web3 more and the ethos of Web3, which really resonated with me. And then um, I started releasing my art as NFTs. Um, I'd also studied animation when I was younger um, after I'd left university because my family wanted me to still like have something on the, on the go, you know, they didn't believe DJing was a proper job. Um, so yeah, so that led me into, to like, well, I was releasing my, I, I released my first NFT collection on, on the Terra blockchain actually. So, um, and then I moved to Ethereum and, um, I, I've released a couple of NFTs like with art and music, but art being the focus. And so this is the first time that music is, is being the focus. And from all this that I'm doing, like, I, my DJing career sort of like ignited again, but in a different way. Um, and it all feels very organic this time around. Um, and yeah, here I am. And, and there's all, and there's so many more like creative possibilities opening up every single day that I'm like, I'm so excited about this time and this point in my life. So yeah. I hope that was. Wow. Clear. I mean, <laughs> so much in there that i i would love to to come back to um and and i'm going to come back to it in one second but i just want to remind everybody that we you know if you pre if you're on the pre-release uh list you can purchase the nft the keep trying nfts from sarah May now so go on there now and connect up your wallet if you're on the pre-release but only if you're on the pre-release 
And I'm sorry if you weren't on the pre-release, but you should have been a little bit quicker with that one. But anyway, um, so yeah, yeah. So listen, I mean, that's so such an incredible career it, already with with the music. What I absolutely love about what you do is is the visual and the and the art kind of coming together. And I suppose, but actually, but before I ask that question, let's go back a little bit to some of the stuff you were talking about because there were so many cool things in there. The starters. Ibiza, obviously the spiritual home of electronic music, you know, has been in the, the hippie trail for those that don't know is that it was a, a trail that in the sixties where people used to sort of bounce around from country to country. And there were these specific places and Ibiza was one of those places. And because it's an incredibly spiritual place and it grew out of that grew this incredible hedonistic lifestyle kind of clubbing scene, which of course, once the sort of elect, like the big electronic music thing blew up in the sort of late eighties, early nineties really became like the center. So you were, Sarah, you were right there at the hub of all of this, right there at the beginning of it. And you saw it grow into something much bigger and, and all that kind of stuff. Tell us a little bit about what it was like when you first got to Ibiza and you first, you know, th those clubs, what they were like back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, for me coming from Australia, um, which back then felt like a little bit of a police state. I'm sure it's even more so these days, but landing in this island of like freedom and and it it was it was like it, it felt like like cowboy country, you know? Like you could you could get away with murder there, you know? Um but not not that there is like you know like there's not a lot of crime there which is which is amazing, but like, you know, people you know, you just there's there's no, there wasn't that many rules and regulations, and you know you could always get around if you got in tr a little bit of trouble. You could always, you know, offer a couple of guest lists into the club, and you you'd like get off, you know. So uh, it's not like that these days. But back then it was. It was sort of like it was just fun. Everyone was having fun, and the the thing that most got me was the characters and the the way they express themselves through their, the way they dress, the way they spoke, the way they danced. I'd never seen performers like it. I'd never seen like this, this visual, like, like array of, of different things going on in a, in a club night that you see over there or even in the street, like people would get around in these crazy get ups. And, and the one thing that I loved was, there was a constant like flow of like international superstars coming through, but like when they would land, say like in, in Pasha, they didn't get treated. They didn't get the special treatment and, and no one would flock around them and take photos of them. And like, they felt like they could be a normal person. And I think that's what was really attractive for them as well. Like we've had the Royals there, you know, like, um, oh, too, I mean, too many to mention every superstar, you can imagine it's been in Pasha and they just they just hang out and no one bothers them. Um, obviously that all changed with social media. As soon as like people could take photos with their phones and stuff like that, it changed everything. Um, but back in the day, it was super special. There was even like these super special places around the island. Um, one place especially called Atlantis, where you'd you'd have to be told by a local how to get there. Um, but now you see it like all over Instagram, people doing selfies, they've got like party boats to go around to it. So it's not so sort of sacred anymore. But back then it it felt really special and really, really sacred. And and it was just this coming together of everyone. Like everyone was equal, like from the young kid from, you know, from the worst suburb in the UK hanging out with like the most glamorous like Hollywood actress from you know LA or something and and everyone was equal and everyone was um just together having fun and you know like it was it was insane like everyone had a smile on their face and um yeah the energy was so electric like and, and the parties were non-stop it would go like every day there was something to do 24 hours a day you'd sort of go from one place to the other you know to the other to the other and until you you know you'd fall over <laughs> from, from exhaustion you know
but yeah, it was. Uh, a brilliant but there's something, well. isn't there? Something magical about the energy there. I don't know about you, but it, whenever I've been in Ibiza and I've been on a bit of a, a, a fun, a jolly, it's you never get kind of tired. You just there's just something about the energy there and the heat and the fact that the vibe is still going. And yeah, of course, you know, you can throw in the, 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 you know, the fun, the fun funnies as well and, and all of that and a bit of booze or whatever, but it's not really about that. It's just something about that place. The energy just drives you, you know? Yeah, totally. I mean, I was, I would live in the summer back in the days, maybe, you know, I'm not like that anymore. Um, Maybe I don't know how to tap into the energy anymore. No, I, I think none of us are like that anymore, Sarah. I mean, yeah. we've had our we we we've, we did our we did our run we did our runnings. I don't know if I could handle it anymore, like any of that kind of behaviour. But it was great. Well, great when I was younger. It was fantastic. I loved it. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't advise anybody to do it. Of course. No, no. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want my son to be doing it. <laughs> so what? What's it like when you're in 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 Pasha and you're playing? You're standing there and you're playing tracks and it's just going off what does what's the energy like what's it feel like because it is an amazing place Pasha. yeah i mean it is like everyone would always ask me in like interviews like what's your favorite place to play in the world you know and i'm like it's always been that that main room because it's it, it it's a bit it's a massive club but it feels intimate like where the other super clubs you know you don't feel that sort of like connection with the people but with with Pasha, you feel like you're actually almost on the dance floor with them and it just feels warm and you feel like you're in this big sort of like hug of music. I don't know. It's a really, it's, it's just a, it's just a different, it's a different feeling. There's a different energy in that club. Um, I, I played again. I returned back there um, this last summer and it was, it was still the same. It was exactly the same. It was a beautiful experience. And and I'm like, now I'm like, I don't really want to play anywhere else except Pasha because it's just, it, it's my musical spiritual home. Let's just say that. Yeah, I I, I've, I was lucky enough to play it a few times and it is, it's it's up there for me. I mean, I also love, used to, I played at DC10 as well. I used to love playing there. And, and I've, I, was, I was resident of ministry, so back in right at the beginning and all the way through that golden period in the 90s. So for me, that was, that will be my spiritual home because it was just, that it was just phenomenal. I had so many incredible nights put DJing there. But I think the thing is, is that you, the clubbing has changed and social media has changed clubbing. But, you know, but at the same time, a great track with brilliant visuals and we're seeing it more and more is always going to, you know, is always going to cut. And of course, there are a lot of people now who, you know, make, you know, there's Twitch and there's SoundCloud and there's so many other places for you to kind of use your music and DJ in. What um we're gonna we're coming up actually oh we're coming up hang on hang on a minute hang on a minute let me see let me let me get the nod from the boys that it's it's up and running and live uh just I've pinned a tweet at the top there just if you go to that tweet you'll find the link to uh Sarah's page on token tracks um get your ETH while it's ready everybody um let we hang on a minute. Let me see. Wait, wait, I'm just waiting for the guys to give me the, the thing, but I'm gonna. We're gonna have to see if we're gonna if it's live. I think it might be live. I think it might be live. Hang on. Uh, oh, oh, oh! It's coming up. Here we are. Oh, I'll have to put this on now. Here we go. Look. Let's see if this works. Here we go. Got the countdown music in there now. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yes. We are live, everybody. Get over to Token Tracks. Let's mint this motherfucker. I think we better play it, right, Sarah? I think we better play it, right? I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> I think we should play it. Here it comes. This is Keep Trying from Sarah Main. Let's do it. Try. 
Get in. What a tune this is, Sarah. This is such Thank a you. tune. Such Thank a you. tune. You know what? It's got a little bit of stardust. Music sounds better with you. It's got a little bit of that in there. I yeah, can feel that I mean, vibe coming out. <laughs> that's a nice sound. Like, I just love the, the happy, vibey, sort of disco-tinged, uh, filtered house. That that was always the one style that, that got me. So, And I, I feel like it's having a little bit of a, um, a comeback at the moment so um yeah got some got some more tracks uh lined up ready to go so exciting times but that but that that's the thing isn't it that's what i think is we need now we need more than ever is some like really great happy uplifting feeling dance music because you know it just for me feels like the way the world is going so you know getting lost on a dance floor and just listening to some great like uplifting happy house music just really really makes my day but you know even if it's not on a dance floor dancing around your kitchen or anything like that just i think people need that right oh yeah totally totally i'm yeah i it, we need to balance out <laughs> balance out the, the dark and the light so Absolutely. I've actually done a, a, a Spotify playlist, um, which is just overly positive, uplifting, happy disco music. So um, are you able to share that? I think we need that. Right. You know, we, we you know, and I'm, I'm sure that's the first track on it. Right. You know what I mean? I think if you can, you can need that. So everybody, guys, get over to Token Tracks. You can get that right now on TT. Go to Token Tracks. The link's at the top. And... Here's a little special thing, right? I'm going to do a little, little, little gift. Okay, so whoever buys it, send me your wallet. DM me directly your wallet, right? And DM me your wallet number that you've bought the NFT from. At the end of tonight, which is in about 25 minutes, I'm going to pull one out the bag. Okay, I'm going to pull one out the bag, and that one's going to get 50 bucks yes fifty dollars so more than paying back i would have imagined for the nft so it that if that is an incentive enough i'm going to send you 50 of those 
beautiful dollars worth of tracks tokens and you can go and get like whatever you want with that and back at the go back to any token tracks whatever but yeah get the dm me a wallet mate go out and buy it buy it with the wallet send dm it to me and i will give pick one of you lot you crazy kids oh my god you crazy kids I might even throw one of my track stems in there as well, just for like, you know, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, come yeah. on. Um, but listen, I mean, uh, this is such a, such a such a great track. Tell tell us a little bit about the artwork as well, because the artwork's amazing. It's so beautiful. And there's also incredible amounts of utility involved in this job, like so much. I mean, more, I've, I mean, you could get, you can go to like a, one of these, one of the clubs that Sarah's DJing at in, in Ibiza, you know, for free. I mean, what's that? A couple of hundred bucks once you get in, and what I mean, you know. So, tell us a bit about the artwork and also tell us a bit about the uh utility. Yeah, okay. So, so the artwork, um, is uh, I, I've been I've been, been experimenting with um, with AI, so I put in um, my one of my original paintings and then it spits out its versions of it, and then I make a collage out of that. And then I, I paint my own interpretation of it. So it's like a back and forth thing, which I find really, um, really cool. So that's the album artwork. And then what I've done is I just made it into a little like um, colourful gif. So it moves a little bit, makes it a little bit disco-y. Um, but then I have offered with the, um, with the track a printable um, copy of the album artwork. And then that also has an uh, augmented reality layer, which is an animation which plays with the track. So when you view the artwork, so if you printed it out and had it on your wall, you can view it through your phone and the animation will, it'll come to life basically. I think it's a really nice, nice, cool thing to have. Um, so the art's just, it's like living art. It's not static. So the animation is also an AI animation um, from a tool that I found, which is um, reactive to music. Um, so I, I chopped the, the sample into five parts and I made different prompts for each section and then I married them all together. So they all, so I had a little bit of like, um, well, different movement, like camera angles and, and the way it moved in and out and, and around and stuff like that, just to make it a little bit more dynamic. Um, so yeah, so there's that, there's the entry to the clubs, which, um, yeah, a, a general entry is from like, maybe depending on which club it's like from 40 to a hundred euros, um, entry into a beta clubs. And also there's the free entry to any of my gigs around the world, because, um, I also still tour a little bit. So if I drop into to any one city, you know, they're welcome to be on my guest list and, you know, like come and hang out in the DJ box and stuff like that. So that'd be really cool. Um, and then, yeah, what, what else? <laughs> I don't have my list in front of me. Is that all? Um, and then I think we're like, well, we're going to have like a little like collector's telegram group as well. Um, so that's going to be nice. So I can sort of like drop my new creations, maybe get some feedback and maybe we could like create something together. I mean, that's just the start of like building a really, um, nice community where where I'm actually in contact with the people that are supporting my art which I think is one of the most brilliant things about web3 yeah I think this combination of music and art together thing is really really beautiful it kind of you know when I first started buying records back in the day I used to love I, I think it was only art you know because you, you take things for granted you know and so it was when CDs came in and sort of the booklets came in, but I, I felt like I was losing something with, with that kind of piece of vinyl and the big piece of artwork that I was experiencing. And I really love the way that kind of NFTs and Web3 drops have brought back this kind of inter, inter what's the word I'm looking for? Interconnection between music and art and the way that the art, you know, defines the music and the way the music defines the art. I think it's really, really like we're going to see so much more of this, I think, coming through. And it reminds everybody that there is a, you know, that, that music is amazing to listen to, but it's it's a multi-sensory experience. And particularly lyrically, you know, if you're bringing out something in the lyrics or bringing out something in the feel of the music itself, I think that's so, you know, so important. Do you know what I mean, sir? 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, for me, it's perfect <laughs> because, uh, you know, it just opens up that scope of creativity where before I thought like, well, that's my sort of DJ music career and that's my art career and they're very separate and I have to keep them apart. And now I'm like, oh, my God, they're, they're so married that it's ridiculous. So um, for me to be able to do both and bring it all together is a really special experience. So I'm very happy. I'm hearing that actually the the we we aren't actually live just yet. Sorry about that, everybody. Welcome to Web Free, um, but it's but it will be very very shortly. It's just I think there's something to do with the allow list that's uh, that's messing things up. But it we but we will be live completely shortly. And let's go back to some of this utility because I'm looking here now at the list and I didn't realise um, that there's also a free mint of your next drop, right? The next release. That's what I was missing out. <laughs> that yes, was... that's, that's right. Yeah. yeah, right. So you're getting two NFTs for the price of one, effectively, right? Sorry, I'm woofies, woofing over here. Yes, yes, that's correct. And, uh, yeah, the, the next one that we've got coming up is, uh, yeah, I, I'm playing it out in my sets and it's, it's a banger. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy with it. And, and we're going to be... Am I right in saying we're going to be playing together, right? We're going to be DJing in London if, if anybody's around. When, when is that? Do you want to remind everybody when that is? Yes. Yeah, so um, we're doing an event together on the 1st of April um, and the event uh, is like a Web3 meetup. Um, I don't know if we're going to talk about that, but the after party is at a venue called 25 Paul Street um, and it's uh, – I, I, I'm guessing it's going to be like pretty much like a day rave. Um, we're going to be there from six till eleven p.m. and uh, yeah, me and me and Tommy are going to be DJing on the ones and twos. Um, we're going to be I, happy I, I housing it up. Huh? <laughs> we're going to be happy housing it up, aren't we, Sarah? I mean, it's just, <laughs> no, like, it, people I'm are going to come out with to smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's um, going to be epic. It's going to be epic. We, we we're taking over – the venue has, like, five floors and we we're taking over a whole floor to ourselves. So, um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. I hope everyone can uh, can drop by if you're in London, of course. What day is it again? It's the 1st of April, so it's Saturday the 1st of April. See, for yeah. April Fools, only it won't oh, be yeah, because we won't be April Fools, Sarah. Exactly we'll be happening. April Smiles. <laughs> April smiles all year the round. Venue and the venue's closed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just plot up outside. We'll do a Diplo <laughs> or, you know, whatever, or a Skrillex or whatever. We'll just get the bus and we'll just get the sound system. We'll get that guy who's got the sound system, like, attached to his back that goes around DJing around, around the streets. Um, okay, I, apparently the, uh, the, the allow list is now turned off and we are all good. So anybody, get down there. And like I say... Get down there, pick up this incredible piece of music and art. Well worth, I mean, stupidly cheap, 0 0.0144 ETH. I mean, it's just for what you're getting here. The the extended club mix, right? You're getting that and the artwork. You're getting a special DJ mix. You're getting a printable file of the NFT artwork, including the AR layout, which is just beautiful. I've seen that. You're getting free, yes, free entry to any of Sarah's worldwide gigs, worldwide gigs, right? Anywhere where she's playing, you can come down as part of the ownership of this, right? So any of the clubs in Ibiza, I mean, I would go to Ibiza just so I could go to get in for Pasha for free. You know, you swan up and it's like, yeah, I'm on a guest this year. So yeah, bang, straight in. So you're getting that, you're getting a free min of the next one. So you're getting two for one on this and you're on the allow list for all the future releases. And not only that, but you'll then be in a draw for me to give you another 50 bucks worth of, of, uh, of, of lovely track tokens. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jesus, what if you're not already attaching your wallet right this minute and picking this up, I don't know what more do you want? You want the blood? You want the blood? Um, so yeah, brilliant. Let's come back to this release, um, a little bit more. And, as, and also your plans for, for what's going to happen th this year. Cause I know you've got a crazy busy schedule this year. Lots going on. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what, the, what you can tell us, of course, sir about what you've got coming up this year sure um so well the the next thing that i'm i'm really really excited about is um a uh, a music nft that 
is is mixed down in in Dolby Atmos. Um, that's going to be released in a couple of weeks, um, and it's it's a totally different. It's it's not house music. It's more sort of atmospheric, um, ambient. I don't know what you would call it, but it was it sort of felt right to mix down in Dolby. Um, and we've already we already got to listen to it in the Dolby Studios in London, um, and it was I, like I actually cried. It sounded that good. Like I had no idea that. <laughs> That a song could sound well from the technology, it it gave it this like sort of three dimensional experience. It was it was very special. So um, we're actually releasing that as an NFT, and it will also come with um, an animation um, and a a story um, about the the project is called Data Vader. So. Um, the the story of Data Vader will be nine chapters and whoever buys that NFT will be getting a hardcover book about the story and each chapter will have a visual which will also have an AR layer of that particular part of the animation. I, it's a little bit confusing. I understand it in my own head. I don't know if I'm explaining it properly. Um, but, yeah, it, for me this is a very special project. This is more... Um, like the Sarah Main stuff is more sort of clubby and dancey and my sort of DJ led stuff, but Data Vader is, is the more experimental and sort of like music artistry. So I'm really excited about that. That is like what we're doing on the 1st of April before we go and rave. <laughs> um, so that's exciting. And then the, the next drop will be um, in April um, and that will be the free mint for everyone who um, gets this, this track today. Um, and then uh, I've, I have um, a trip to Australia um, where I'm going to be exhibiting my, my NFT art for the Viv Vivid Festival with Future Art, who I've worked with um, for quite a while now. Um, great guys and proper OGs in the NFT space. And they take over like one of the biggest clubs in Sydney called Home which um, I, I played in back in the day, back in the 90s. Um, so I'm really, really excited to go back and be able to like pull everything together in my hometown. Um, and I'll be releasing a, uh, another NFT collection there, which I've been working on for a while called The Besties, which is like 10 hand-painted characters, which are um, focused around the god Bess, who is very famous in Ibiza. He's the god of like dance and music and, and fertility. Um, so there's a whole story around that too. So, uh, yeah, on the creative side, a lot going on. Um, and then also um, continuing on um, working with Decentralize and um, putting together our event for August, um, which is based around um, supporting the, the Web3 musicians. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then we've also got a few other exciting um, products that are going to be launched in the next couple of months, um, which are there to, to support the creator community. So, um, yeah, excited about that. Um, and then, I, then there is another project that, that, that me and Tommy have been speaking about, but I think that's going to be a long-term sort of like. Project. Yeah, we're going to keep yeah. that one we'll, definitely we'll that under wraps. That. That, yeah. That's <laughs> going to be insane. That's going to be so good. And, of course, if you have, you know, this NFT, keep trying. If you have Sarah's NFT, then you'll be definitely on the allow list for that. But, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be huge. I mean, absolutely huge. Um, shout out to all the devs working uh, into the night as all in, in, in our, in our dev community working in to make this happen. Thank you very much to our token tracks team as well for putting this together and making sure that all of this happens. It's such, it's, it's such an honor to have you on the site, Sarah. It really is. It's, it's such an honor to have you part of our family and to be involved in this. I just love working with you. I love your music. I love your vibe and I love the artwork and it's just such a great honor to have you as part of the team. If you're interested, if anybody's interested in, in what we're doing over at Token Tracks, go and check out. Really, really interesting company. We're not just a marketplace. We're all kinds of different things. We're a total 360 approach to how uh, how you do things in this space. What we do, if you, if you don't know my regular Mondays, I do a regular Monday space with Fifi and Genzo. Shout out to Genzo. I think he's still in the, 
know he's gone now. Um, and we talk about music and NFTs and all kinds of stuff like that. And Token Tracks is really just an extension of what, what those discussions are about. It's a, a music company that really looks at how we can use Web3 tools to really innovate music on so many different levels and provide, I think, to the opportunity to build a whole new music business where people are fairly play, paid for what they do, where artists can front load themselves at the beginning, they can build a great community, they can bankroll themselves with a little bit of cash and get themselves running and get some equipment and some, maybe some studio time, maybe go on tour, and through their community just have a great support network which keeps them building and building and building. It doesn't stop you going and doing streaming, it doesn't stop you going and doing you know, your social media and maybe getting a deal or some kind of label deal or a publishing deal or whatever it doesn't stop you doing any of that if you want if you want to stop doing that then you can you can do it it's but the, the point is is that you have the freedom to choose your own value and that's really really important that's why i'm here that's why sarah's here that's why we're all here because we believe in that as a concert right sarah um yeah and i think that's one thing that i've totally forgotten to actually talk about today is the fact that this is sort of like a hybrid release so we released it on um Langerwood Records um which is owned by a good friend of mine um an independent music label um so it's released on with them as a normal track and, and across all DSPs and then we combine that with the NFT release so it's a collaboration between sort of like the traditional means and the new way and to see how we can all work together so it is a little a bit experimental but, you know, I think there is that really nice, happy medium where we all can work together. So for me, collaboration is, is such an important part of being in this space and working together. So being able to combine efforts um, and create something um, where everyone wins for me is, yeah, is amazing. So that's, that's what we're, we're doing today, a high, hybrid release. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. And, and that, 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 you know, it's important. I think people often ask me, they say, well, so like with music NFTs, does that mean you don't go on streaming? It's like, no, go on streaming. You want people to go and, and, and enjoy the track. You know, we as music people, we love uh, everybody loving our music. Streaming is a great place to go and find music. It just doesn't pay anything. It just, it's just pointless at trying to make a living out of streaming unless you're, you know, Ariana Grande or Justin Bieber. You know, it's just not going to happen. So, you know, this is where the opportunities for things like Web3 to help and support the people that like what you're doing. And if you like the music and you like the artist, then, then just do it. And I know times are hard. I know it's difficult at the moment and everybody really understands that, you know, even parting with 10 bucks or 20 bucks or 30 bucks is is difficult for a lot of people but you know it's difficult for artists as well and so you know any chance that you get to actually support artists if you can do if you can financially do it then that's great but more importantly you become part of their community you become part of their gang and you get to be involved in what they're doing and over time you might be more involved in the actual structure of how things might, you know the music that's coming out or the choices of singles or that kind of stuff and of course like we've got with sarah here you get a chance to go get into the club you get a chance to 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 look at the you know what's coming down the line and be involved in that so um it's really 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 amazing i think we're gonna um we're gonna yeah everything's sorted now so get down there buy it no problem whatever when you've done when you've bought it whether you bought it tonight or whether you bought it tomorrow whatever just dm me your wallet we'll check it with next to the sales and i'm gonna pick one out over the next i'll probably do, actually you know what i'm gonna do it over i'm gonna give it like the weekend because it's like fairer that way and then we got more chance so because gas is high and you might not want to just buy it straight may and i understand that that's fine um so Sarah, tell us a little bit more, um, a little bit more about what your plans are for this weekend. Are you DJing us somewhere this weekend? No, um, I'm I'm actually going to take a break um, because I have been working a little bit over time. I, I I sort of like dropped this bomb on on the guys last week. I'm like, right, can we drop next week? So thank you to all the team. Like they've been like absolutely amazing. You know, I put everyone under pressure and everyone like really came through and was super helpful. So thank you to you, Tommy, and to the whole team. They're amazing. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I did that because I need to put myself under pressure. Otherwise, like things just, they're just, they're just like things I want to do and then they sort of never get out of my head. So 
um, yeah, that's the way I, I roll the best, I think. But, um, yeah, so this weekend I'm actually going rollerblading with my sister and my son. We're in Barcelona right now. So that's what's on the on the cards, very rock and roll. <laughs> that sounds so cool. Is, there, is this just like one of Nile Rogers kind of, because he's got a bunch of these different roller disco places, hasn't he? Is it one of his or something, something to do with him? Oh, no, it's just like, <laughs> I, I wish that would be a lot more, even a little bit rock and roll, but no, this is basically like a beginner's rollerblade class <laughs> because I don't know how to rollerblade. I used to roller skate, but I, you know. That was a long time ago. So my sister's taking us down to the beach and they, they give you some rollerblades and they show you the ropes. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. That's <laughs> the brilliant thing about Barcelona. Brilliant. That's the brilliant uh, thing about Barcelona. You think it's a city, and then it, which it is, of course, and then it's got the beach. You know, it's got the whole beach area that you sort of don't realise when I first went to Barcelona. I was like, you mean there's a beach? You know, it's like, yeah, it's a fucking great beach. And it's like got loads of bars and clubs and... And although I'm not particularly, I shouldn't say this, but I'm not a particularly big fan of Pasha's club down down in Barcelona Beach, I have to say. It's not a patch on the one no. in Ibiza. No, you know yeah. what, I've no, actually never mm. been there. But <laughs> You're not missing anything. You're really you not know, missing much. It's one of much. the only patches I never played. And like, yeah, so that, yeah, no, I know I have, I, you know, I know that there's other clubs that are preferred here in Barcelona. I, I don't know if I should say that, but yeah, that's the truth. It's so. fine. <laughs> Um, Elro's great. That's a good one. Um, all right. So, um, we're going to play it out. I'm going to, uh, uh blah, oh, my mouth's gone. I'm going to wind down this one now and, uh, we're going to play out with the track again. Um, so Sarah, it's been an absolute, absolute privilege and an absolute joy to have you on the space tonight and to be there at the inaugural drop of this keep trying and, and to be there here at the point where it's actually going live. This is really cool. We haven't actually done a drop party before. So this is great to do it and we'll be oh. doing it no this is our first one we've ever done this is actually oh, the first amazing. one we've ever done i know um so i, I just want to also say massive again one thank you to all the team for for getting this for pulling this one out back because it was a bit last minute and it, it yeah i think you think next time we'll have to take the put the brakes a little bit on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah, fine I'll it's all good a few more weeks next time a few more weeks notice you know so I, I <laughs> exactly quick thank you to everyone that's that's dropped by i can see so many friends down there in the audience um fifi stilo david war plug um nuno alex taylor ira andrea um wwyk wiggy um uh danny ian jason um craig thomas emil yeah and everyone else sdr CT, aka is that aka Chumbo? No, yeah, it is Chumbo. Cool stuff. Um, yeah. So everyone, thank you so much for coming along and sticking around, and yeah, listening in to, <laughs> to my waffling. And I tell you what, I tell you what we'll do. This is what we'll do on mon my Monday space. That's what I'll do. I will announce the winner on my Monday space. So you've got the weekend to mint this and then send me, like I said, DM me your wallet address. I see people are doing it already now, which is great. DM me your wallet address. And then on Monday space at 6 p.m. UK time, same time as this one started, 6 p.m. UK time, my, my Monday, my normal music Monday space that I do uh, every and have been doing since uh, October 21 will announce the winner. So make sure you, you uh, go out there, get Sarah's drop, get Keep Trying, and then come on The Space on Monday and have a listen. Make sure you DM me your wallet address, of course, as well. I'll check it on Monday. So wicked. Thank you, Sarah. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I thank you, Tommy, and thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I was super nervous, but it's ended up being okay. So. It's fine. Come yeah. on. And just, for, you know, th this is the start of many, many, many drops. This is the start of many, many concepts, all of it. You know, this is – it's like when you put your first track out and you think, this is going to be huge and it's going to be great. And then everyone goes, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then you're like, yeah. okay. But then you get a few people come back and go – uh, this is sick. This is really, really good. You're, oh, oh, yeah, thank you very much. You know, and you I kind of just feel it's like, you know, it's like that. Sometimes you get loads of people coming in and sometimes you don't. But it doesn't really matter. The quit, the thing is, is to get on it, get going, get doing it. Keep keep building, keep believing. That's what I always say. 
Yeah, you know, to be honest, like the thing for me is not about like the actual whether people buy it. I think it's more like like putting my sort of soul out there into the world, you know, like putting it out there. That's that's the thing that gets me nervous. I it's the same when I like have an art exhibition or put anything out, you know, it's just that ah, oh, you know, <laughs> releasing your bearing your soul to the world. So um, they're like your it's like your children, isn't it? It's like you're saying you're you're showing your children, you know. Yeah. So I mean if people wanna 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 uh, buy it, that that's that makes my my, you know, heart super warm, but you know, that's not the point. Um I, I, I actually just love creating. Like I, I need it. <laughs> it uh it it's my life force, you know. So it's 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 a beautiful thing that I actually get to do that. Um so I'm really isn't it? Yeah. Aren't we just so blessed? Well, look, everybody, yeah. thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great Friday. I'm going to play this out. Play this out with Keep Trying again. This is Keep Trying Sarah Main live now on Token Tracks. Go over there, pick it up, and let's get busy and enjoy. Whoever, whoever, you know, if you pick this up and you go along and there you are in a beefer and you're in a club, there, Sarah's put you on the list and you're in a club and Keep Trying comes on, you'll be like sitting there with a big smile on you your face this is keep trying by sarah main let's do it oh no it's not hey i messed up sorry here we go Yes, yes, yes. Keep trying. Sarah Main, go and get it on Token Tracks right now. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a great rest of the weekend and see you on Monday, 6 p.m. Take it easy. Bye.